Hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Morning. Oh, Hello. gosh. It's a good afternoon, is it? It's 12 30. <laughs> gosh, the morning has just flown by. I hope it's just as nice everywhere where you are. It's beautifully sunny here. Um, we've got all the tourists out in the village. So, uh, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, going to be very busy, I think, this afternoon. So, uh, and we'll have lots of people going past the office, peering through our doors, going, oh, I wonder what they do in there. Oh, they don't have masks on. Oh, I wonder what they're doing. So, there you go. Good. So, you all look, yes, you all look healthy. That's good. Is it the drugs and the alcohol working? Yes. Good. Glad about that. Um, it's about the same as this end, really. Um, so we don't have any particular updates to furlough. There was something that came through today, which seemed glaringly obvious to us, that um, it, <laughs> that it was when you're paying variable hours employees, their notice that you actually have to calculate it on 100% of their actual earnings, not their 80% furlough pay. So you don't take the 80% that they were getting on furlough, even if that was the last 12 weeks, which is how it would be calculated in pre-coronavirus times. What you have is that we, and this is what we've been saying, is that you should be using the 52 weeks, last 52 weeks, and that includes the furlough time, but the 100% amount of hours, not the 80% that you've been paying them out. OK, this is the, the biggest change that came in today. It's not a change for us. That's what we've been doing from the beginning. But obviously, there are some employers out there who are very happy to try and find a loophole. Um, I'll just say I've got Ryan here in the office. He's doing filming from my marketing company. I sent out an email yesterday about this marketing company I work with. And he's been going around. He's spoken to Gary in Reading, hasn't he? And Gary said suitably uh, nice things about me. So that's why we're still talking to him. Thank you, Gary. My pleasure, Caroline. <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to have a, a different, we're going to have a, a video with testimonials from golf clients on the golf website and from gap clients on the gap one. But he's doing what's called B roll. I'm learning all these words now. Um, so, of us pretending to work and me pretending to talk to you and give you actual advice. So, that's excellent. Everybody's happy. So, that's good. Um, what have we been dealing with this week? Um, Settlement agreements, quite a lot of settlement agreements. That's a popular one if people want to get rid of one person from a team but don't want to put the whole team at risk. It's not the cheapest way to do it, but it can be very effective if you've got the money to throw at that. Um, there is obviously, when you talk to an employee about that, the without prejudice conversation, there is shock on their side. And that is, that's the thing that we're spending most time with is talking to club managers and talking to business owners and explaining, yes, absolutely, it's rational that they should go for this offer with more money. Absolutely. But they are not in a rational place right now. They have just been told in their ears, we don't like you. You need to go have some money and shut up. OK, I'm paraphrasing, but. You know, that's what they've been told. Um, and so they are reacting to that. Once they've had time to calm down, speak to a solicitor, speak to maybe their partner or their friends, they will go, actually, yeah, I never really liked living, working there anyway, and they'll move on. Um, but at the beginning, there is obviously still some some kickback from them that they're, they're not just going, oh, my God, this is amazing. Thank you very much. So that's uh, just be aware that if you are doing it, don't expect it immediately to be accepted. It will be. Uh, thought about we haven't had anybody refute no that's not true we've had one person so far in the private sector company refuse um, because she wants to make the business owner go through the pain of a redundancy process so that's what we're doing now so there you go uh, she will end up with less money than she would have in the settlement agreement so and we would still be part in company with her um, what else so redundancies yes if you those are all fine. We've had fewer calls on the GCMA advice line, which is good. So there's fewer club managers being asked to leave. But should you have any of those conversations, please do give us a call. Um, because at the very least, um, to be honest, I'm, I will be blunt, committees tend to forget that we're there. So if we need to give you advice, we will give you as much advice as we can before we are informed by the committee, which almost never happens. I'm just saying they go and pay a solicitor to give them really bad advice, but that's their choice. Um, 
And if they do get in touch with us, obviously there is a conflict of interest, then we would pass you on to our freelancer, Emma, who will who is not involved on the day-to-day -day operations at all and she would advise you absolutely what your rights are and what you can do about it and she doesn't tell us what she's advised you um, and we don't tell her what we're advising the club but we found that when we've done it that way in the past the club behaves properly and the employee behaves properly and we get a an amicable solution at the end it's when the club are getting the wrong advice so that it usually escalates it's not usually the general manager who's escalating it it's the club who get you know a solicitor who's never done this before telling them stupid things so that's one thing to think about um discipline ah okay yes yeah, so furlough lots of people are still coming back from furlough um on the flexible furlough scheme so that you can obviously top up their wages um Again, be aware that the employees see this and you might have more of these conversations, particularly when you get people back to work full time. People are seeming to see this as an entitlement, the furlough payments, and not as a generous gesture on the part of the government and of the club. Um, and that they are then upset when they are asked to take holiday. And it's like, well, no, but we're allowed to do that. Yes, that's not fair. You should just pay me out. You're already being paid. And it's usually the ones who are being paid 100% of their salary who are objecting to being made to be put on holiday. The ones who are 80% somehow perversely are just grateful. But the ones who've been on 100% um, are then, oh, well, but I need more money. It's like, you're getting 100% for nothing. We've just given notice to somebody under redundancy and she's been off on lockdown since the 20th on 100% pay for doing nothing. And now we've got a three month notice period where she's on 100% and she is uh, adamant that she wants her 47 hours of holiday paid out because we're trying to cheat her. It's like you've had seven months of 100% pay for doing nothing. And it, yes, okay. What planet are you on? In the nicest possible way. Um, we went through WhatsApp. I will keep saying any communications with employees need to be appropriate, need to be what you would share with your mum, with your grandmother, whoever is the most conservative member of your of your family. Um, and yeah, and flirting only if, if you're actually going to, you know, have a relationship, that's fine. But maybe take it out of the group chat. OK, that'll be fine. Um, and don't say anything that could come back and be used by uh, a club. We have got a situation um, in a club where CCTV was illegally downloaded from their system last November, showing allegedly, although we've not seen it because the committee have decided to go off on the tangent on this one, um, showing sexual activity on club premises. And our reaction, sorry, well, obviously too jaded, we're like, yes that how is that unique we're not quite sure how sexual activity on club premises is unique but maybe we, we just live in a different world to, to everybody else um but uh it was circulated amongst the employees and that's come to the attention of the captain the captain has decided to unilaterally suspend people which you're not allowed to do anymore and uh and is going off uh, on a and basically putting the club in the situation of a constructive dismissal claim, whereas we're approaching it from the side of well, actually it's a data breach, but so it's a gross misconduct disciplinary for the the employee who downloaded it before we even start talking about what sexual activity was on there, and we have no idea what that is. But you know, nothing jades us, it scares us any more particularly, which is a sad state of affairs because we're such nice people, really. After the WhatsApp incident with reading what this guy's the videos he was sending it's just like actually pff, normal sex on club premises pff, everyday occurrence obviously you couldn't possibly comment on that but you know i'm just saying i'm sure it happens quite a lot it just doesn't often get caught on camera um what else have we been doing disciplinaries um yeah it's it's it is going back to more um, we've got a lot fewer redundancy processes. We've got about, I think, 15 redundancy processes still ongoing. A couple are saying that they want to start in August, um, but it's now coming up with grievances and disciplinaries for poor performance uh, and for yeah, bad behaviour going forward. So we're getting back to normality on the, the employment law side of things. Has anybody got any questions at the moment? Stephen. Hi, um, on a shielding one or returning from furlough, 
I've got a greenkeeper who was shielding and now wants to return. Um, and I prefer he stay furloughed. Can I use shielding as any part of a reason um, that he's going to be furloughed or just workload and finances? Uh, yeah, you, it, not the shielding, because shielding ends on the 31st. So that would be, that's not great. So it would be better to say there's there's no nothing for him to do. You might need to de use it as a flexible furlough scheme and say, okay, come in for one day a week and then for, off for four days. Um, is it, you don't want him to come in because he's not great at his job? Um, partly that. Partly, he, he's, it's an older employee who um, can't retire now. Um, and he's, the money is probably worth, the fellow money is probably worth more than his time at this moment in time. So it's okay. the start of us looking at redundancies really, but I don't particularly need him back in the short term before I go through that process. Yeah. Okay, you don't have to bring him back. You can just say, no, I'm, we don't have the work. Uh, we'd like you to stay on furlough for the foreseeable future. We'll let you know if things change. That'll be if, absolutely fine. If I go down that route, what notice do I need to give him to take holiday during this next period of furlough? So you need to give him twice as much hol notice as holiday. So if you want him to take five days holiday, you need to give him 10 written days notice, 10 calendar days notice. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, so if I had him, if I kept him furloughed for a month, I yeah. need to give him ten days before I give him the next. Tell him that his third week is holiday. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, what we also have now, so the letter for that, Stephen, is in the Dropbox. Um, the I'm sorry, I've been bad because I signed in a lot of times early days, and I've just been, yeah, got caught working in between. So <laughs> remind, remind me. <laughs> Let, me just, yeah. Let yeah. me just go and get that. Um, copy Dropbox link. I'll put it into the chat. Can you see the chat? I've put it in there now. Mm. There's a link in there. So the Dropbox has the letter requesting the employee to go on holiday. Okay, telling them when they're going to be put on holiday. What it also has, if you search uh, by the most recently added is a new letter which we're also going to send out by our, our MailChimp emails to you guys um, is about a letter to give out to people be, when they say they're going on holiday or they book holiday is to give them this letter which advises them if they have to self-isolate when they come back because the government changes the rules very quickly what how they're going to be paid. Is it going to be they have to use up holiday or is it going to be unpaid or are you going to pay them SSP? Okay, but that you t give them that letter with what you're going to do bef when they tell you they're booking holiday or they're going on holiday um, so that it's all clear should things go pear shaped and it needs to be the same rule for everybody. You can't discriminate between them because they, they, they are going to talk about that. Okay, so whatever it is, it's for everybody who's going on holiday until the government stops putting places in quarantine, I'm going to guess. So, yeah, so that's a good one as well. Um, the other ones that we've had, I'm just thinking we've had um, people, that there are still people who need to have their hours of work changed. If you can do that and cope until the end of October, um, when we'll know what the situation is, is to use a flexible furlough scheme as much as possible. Um, if, however, you are aware that it's not going to change and you actually do need to make changes and redundancies again the sooner we start talking about that and getting everybody on board committees etc the easier because committees because they've done this before in their own businesses have an idea of how it should run that is not necessarily how it is going to run okay <laughs> because things change um so it's it's having the time for them to process that and to understand what they need to do and that somebody needs to be in the meetings and needs to be the same person in all meetings and needs to be continuity in these things it's it's not usually a problem in the golf clubs i must admit but in the private sector um they the business owners are very much oh, well you you could do all the meetings for me it's like yes but not without you it's your business you need to be stepping up we all get paid 
to do the horrible things. Nobody gets paid lots of money to do the nice things. Well, some of us don't get paid lots of money at all. Who am I talking to? So, um, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it needs to be the most senior person on the committee, be that the chairman or the captain, whoever that is, um, and the club manager doing these processes because, and it needs to be continuous all the way through and not that people say, oh, I'm going off on holiday. It's like, well, no, we need to, we need to have one person all the way through, even if it is somebody slightly more junior in the rankings. Um, I don't think we have anything else at the moment. Everybody seems to be fairly well behaved. Mark, have you, you've unmuted yourself? Are you? Yes, yeah, so I was going to ask a question on my phone. It's not sure you just sort of covered it in your last last little bit. But sort of, I mean, we're hoping not to have to go through the redundancy process in zero, but place things to prevent that. But where, if, if we want to reduce people's hours, is that a similar process, really? Yes, so you can have an informal chat with them and say this is what we'd like to do and you can top it up with the flexible furlough scheme until the end of October and then they would okay sorry that was my phone going off I always forget to turn that off um because I don't get many phone calls through because you get all go through call answering and then I'm doing something like this and it's like oh okay um sorry uh, yeah, yeah, we did the out. Yeah, so have you can have an informal chat. You can have an informal chat if they agree to it with the top up through flexible furlough. That's fine. Um, you would need to say whether this is just till the end of October, and then you go back onto your full hours. If you want to make a permanent change, then if they don't accept that change it would need to be a redundancy process to say actually yeah. the other hours aren't there. It's, it's sometimes, it is a bit of a gray area because if you're reducing from 40 hours to 35, that's not such a big deal. But if you are cutting them in half, which I know a lot of the golf clubs are doing for the F&B people, is actually that is then a totally new role. So you, we would have to do a redundancy if they don't accept it. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Good, okay. Steve. Uh, right, a little bit of an uh, update on my little conundrum last week. Yeah. <laughs> it, all sorted, it all sorted itself out. Um, the, it turned out that the member of staff who's doing lots of hours didn't do enough hours, so it came into the flexible furlough, so she got topped up 100%. Yeah. Uh, and the one who was doing less hours also got topped up, but there wasn't sort of like an argument as such, or it wasn't... Um, any problems because both of them got the same. If one had got one and one hadn't, then I yeah. think we would have had an issue. But luckily, yeah. uh, and the problem was as well, we were straddling our payroll is to the 22nd of June. So we were straddling flexi furlough and fixed furlough, yeah. which was, it took us ages to actually work it out. And I still don't think we're right. Um, but um, trying to explain that to staff is even more fun. Yeah. yeah we, we, thanks very much for your input. That was good. That we really helped. No. But one thing I did say was to the, to the committee was we got this, we took your uh, took your advice and said you know the other person's got to do more hours yeah and the other one's got to do less uh, and it turns out the one who's doing the less hours we potentially could have a disciplinary against us so <laughs> 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 okay. I, I know the matter but so it's uh, yes yeah, so we may need the one to do more hours because the other one we may need her to depart yeah. or at least you know, okay so you, you, yeah so you probably need to have a chat with us about that separately yes. Uh, I don't know yet. I'll, go, I'll let you know, and I've still got to book through the stuff that Kathy sent me as regards your fees and stuff. Um, yeah. That, that seems to drop off the agenda every so often. When I try and bring <laughs> it back on, they try to ignore it. So. Yes. So the one who's been disciplined, she's over two years, yes? Yeah, just. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, you're going to need some advice to make sure there's no unfair dismissal claim. That's all. Um, I don't think we'll actually get rid of it yet. I think what we'll do is we'll start the process of discipline and yeah. then see what the reaction is. And then I'm, 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 I'm actually I'm keeping you up my sleeve as such, but I, I do want to use that because, as you said, committees have got to have it going, oh, get rid of that. Yeah. And then we're in trouble. So. Yeah, exactly. If you send me through what you've got, then I can say, yeah, that's fine. Or actually, no, we really do need to talk because this is not yeah. going to work. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing about it is because we've just done the contracts with you, we've got yeah. up to date disciplinary procedure and everything else. So that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah, no, that's good. Well, let's hope that the committee stick to it and don't go off on a yeah. tangent. That's great. No, yeah. no, as I, say, I certainly will. You know, I'll be in touch if uh, things do sort of escalate at the moment. So. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Brilliant. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. 
Okay. Any other questions? Um, what I was also going to say is that I'm down in Devon in Salcom or Salcom, Salcom. Everybody, everybody in the office, we've had big discussions about how you pronounce that, and I'm just like, whatever I say is wrong. Anyway, where I'm in Solcom um, in uh, September, so I was hoping to combine it with a road trip to go and visit people, just have you know cups of coffee, which I wouldn't normally do, not chargeable. But anybody who is down that area, that area, which is a big area you know between here between Reading and Land's End that that big area um I will try and come in and see you um and if you're around in September to have a coffee and just because I haven't got down to many of the club zones it's always nice to see where you actually work and uh, and at least meet the office team because they're the ones who usually answer the phone calls and go okay Caroline from Golf HR and they've never heard of me which is a positive sign because if they have it means we've had a lot of issues so that's good. Okay, good. Well, if there's no more questions, I think that's it for this week. We'll, we'll be here next week. I think Nadia's doing it next week because I am out, but uh, she will keep you up to date with everything. And in the meantime, like I said, anything at all, just send us an email through and we will get back to you. Okay, lovely. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Bye.